there. Oh, I see. Drilled in. Dead bear! Dead All the bear, way to the dude. river. Uh oh. It's okay. He's in the river. <laughs> oh, that's a stud, man. Dude. I think that he's in the river, dog. That's a stud bear. What are we gonna do? Spring bear hunting to me has always been one of those ways to get out in the woods and, and uh, do something in nature before really anything else is going on. It's a uh, time to get out and when everything is kind of like rebirthing and the grass is starting to come up, the snow's melting, uh, animals are, are starting to throw their fawns, their, their offspring, but it's just an absolutely beautiful time of the year and I love that. You know, as outdoorsmen, I think the reason why we are is because we love being outdoors and we look for reasons to spend more time out there and for me spring bear hunting is that but also spring bear hunting is is a good way to hone your skills for the fall it's a good way to get your butt in shape especially after a long winter it's a good way to hone your your glass and skills yeah you know, your your spot and stocking just really just fine-tune your craft if you will and that's why I've call, kind of always fallen in love with it. But to be honest, I can't tell you that the meat is a big driving factor of me being out here. I enjoy bear meat, but it's definitely not in my top five favorite meats to eat, especially uh, wild game meat. It's bearable and it's doable, and, and I have had some recipes that have been phenomenal, but to say that I'm out here for to eat bear meat is, it would be somewhat of a lie. So a few years ago, my eyes were kind of open to really the purpose and reason that we should all be out here contributing to um, a form of conservation and that is to predator hunt and to predator control you know we were out hunting with the on x crew and brian had killed his bear and he was the only one that really had a bear tag and we were kind of ready to be done with it and then one of the guys from on x said well you know bear hunting is conservation and these bears need to die like we need to manage the numbers because of what they do to the deer and elk herds and it really set me back and i started thinking that you know maybe not every hunt has to be a the driving force has to be the eating part of it. If we really are hunters, then we should really believe that hunting is conservation. And there's no better way to see that and to foresee what's going to happen, especially this year. The West went through one of the hardest winters we've had in a number of years. And a lot of the elk and the deer numbers are going to be lower than what we've seen in, in most of our lifetimes. Now, the problem we have is, as hunters, we can kind of control and manage ourselves with science and data. The, the other side of that table is predators can't and they won't and they don't. The predators made it through just fine. The bears hibernated and they're gonna come out of their dens and they're gonna be looking to eat and what's on their dinner me menu later on in the spring. It's gonna be those young fawns and calves, the ones that did make it. And unfortunately, they don't control or monitor uh, the numbers of the deer and elk like humans can. And so the way I see it is as hunters this year, should be a great gateway for you to get out if you've never done it and experience a predator hunt because those numbers are the same the predator numbers are the same but unfortunately the ungulate numbers are down and there is these predators are going to try to eat the same amount of animals they've always eaten in the past and they're just not there and so for me anyways it's, it's a culmination of everything it's a culmination of getting out being out in the woods this early honing my my skills my glassing and all that but it's also Let's do our part and uh, and contribute to the predator control because it's a very very important piece of all this puzzle. Oh yeah. 
good morning, good afternoon. How are we doing, guys? It is May the 5th. And, may the 5th uh, be with you. May the 5th be with you. What? What? That's a, it's, today was when Star Wars Justin Timberlake. Crazy. Anyway, we uh, today's day one of the bear hunt. Um, got over here last night. Got over just in time to get camp set up. Um, glass from camp a little bit, but not much. But we have a couple things that aren't going so swimmingly for us. And Well, one thing, and that's we're supposed to get hit by a torrential downpour today and the weather's not supposed to be great for the next two days. I don't know a lot about spring bear hunting, but what I do know is weather just like this is absolutely perfect. That's when the bears come out, feel the most comfortable, feed on the, the side hills when it's raining or snowing or cold. For whatever reason, the bears don't like it. And it's probably a good correlation there between a bear hibernating through the winter and not liking cold weather. I don't know if that's true or not, but it makes sense in my head. So. Uh, we're just kind of getting stuff loaded up, gonna have some breakfast, and then we're gonna head out and uh, on the side by side and go try to spot a bear before we get absolutely dumped on. Well, we can pan over to the rainstorm now. Do you see the mom and the cub? The cub's right, do you see the big one? The cub's right to the right and up of it. See that big dead log that's cut? Yep. You see the mo the baby right in front of it? Yeah. Like, right to the right of it? Yeah. No, just, oh there's Holy two cubs. that is a huge bear. That's a, that's a humongous bear. Huge bear. bear. Huge. I saw the baby first, I'm like, oh hell yeah. And I then thought. I saw the big one, I was like, <laughs> that's a giant that's bear. A big bear. Well, we just got first bears of the trip, man. Um, glass and lower kind of stuff the main road and decided to come up higher where we can get a better angle. And uh, Clayton, Big Eye Clayton, that's his new name. Big Eye Clayton just glassed back and was like, got a bear. And it's actually a sow with two cubs. It's an absolute giant sow that has probably, are those year old cubs you think? Or are they yeah. this year? Probably year old, probably. Year old cubs, but super pretty bear. Big, big bear though, but Chocolate. it's got cubs, so. That's good though, we're in the bears. You feel like when you look find a bear, like that's kind of the elevation you should start concentrating at? Man, I think so. I mean, that's right at that, kind of mixed into that snow line right there. I think that's yeah. all that fresh green right below that snow line. Just below the snow line mm -hmm. and the, all the flowers are popping right below it. That's what we need to look for. She's pretty color too. Yeah. Super pretty color. Chocolate. That didn't take long. <laughs> Bear number two spotted. I'm um, just watching that sow and cub and just, we're like, that's interesting. The bear's on that side because if you look at behind me, man, this side that we're on is just greener and green. And uh, then the main road comes down the bottom and on the other side, there's a little more snow. It looks like the snow just came off that side. That would be a north facing slope. So the snow's gone, but it really hasn't had a chance to green up like this side. But sec third bear or fourth bear is on that side as well. So. Things are looking up. I don't think it's a very big bear, but I'm gonna study him a little more. How far though, do you think? How far is that bear? Yeah. A mile. We might have to get closer, but there is a, we found a road system on that other side. I think we could get pretty close to him. So I think we should probably go get closer to this bear and take a peek. He appears to be by himself. He appears to be fairly good size. It's hard, for, we're a mile, at least a mile away, but we are kind of racing the weather right now. Last night we looked and today's definitely supposed to be a lot of rain and uh, surprisingly we haven't been rained on yet. We kind of been avoiding it for however, but it looks to be like it's headed right towards us. So I think we're going to run over there real quick and take a look at this bear before we get drenched. Hopefully it misses us, but he's actually headed up into the timber. We might not see him again. This is good, man. We got, I think for bear hunting or for any hunting for me anyways, I always like to find the best vantage points that I can use the glass. That's how we do 90% of our hunting is just glassing and finding something we want to go after and then going after. So if you can find that one spot day one, I think uh, that's a big W for the day. We can see a ton of country on both sides of us. We've got bears. Things with bears too, there could be another five bears over there that we haven't seen yet. And they're in the trees or whatever. So I like how things are happening. Yeah, he's just behind some bushes right now. You can barely see so him. So you see those two trees that are split in a row. Hell is yeah. he below all that dead timber? 
walking to the right. Um, He's just to the right of that dead timber, like that down, the logs that are laying down. Yeah, that pile. Yeah, there's one up high that's like real bare that's by itself. He's to the right about 20 yards just through that brush, that green brush, but he's, he can barely make out his outline right now. Listen here, folks. We just came back to camp. Um, started pouring on us. As soon as we got back to camp, it kind of let off. But when we found this camp spot yesterday, I made a guarantee. I said, I guarantee we're going to see a bear from camp in the next week. So it kind of stopped raining. So I was like, I'm going to go find a bear. And we sat down and immediately... Yep, there he is. Immediately just found a bear, just jet black. He's kind of in some bushes right now, so we can't really tell how big he is, but he's just ranging. It's 1,200 yards from here, but definitely a lot of roads in this country. There's a road that's probably like 300 yards below him. So I don't think he's a giant, though. He looked like a good one, because I could just see it. Yeah, he's got a big head. Can't see that's a good bear. You think so? Really? I'm going to go my spot. looks younger. I don't know. I have very poor at judging sides of the bears. You think you could shoot him from that road? No. It'd like be right closer, but I still bet that's an 800 yard Range shot. to the end of that hill. I don't think I want to shoot him though. Sorry, I'm just throwing out commands. Trying to get into some new area. There's a road that will take us all the way up into the top of all this stuff, but the problem is the road got snowed out, so we thought we'd hike in it. There's just too much snow. You know, there are some burned off ridges, but even the burned off ridges up this high don't have any green grass per se right now. It will here in a few days, but from what we learned this morning, there's a lot of bears low obviously below the snow line where there's and I don't know if there's something to do with it but where we saw bears there was obviously like brand it wasn't like ultra green but there was a lot of like just new grass new green grass starting to pop up it seemed like that's really where the bears wanted to be there's a lot of hillsides too that we found that were just covered in green grass and we saw no bears there so I think there's something about like the brand new like grass just popping out just popping through the soil is what the bears really want to target it on but um, yeah we're just checking boxes you know did a little pre-scout before we ever came down here and looked at a lot of maps and my on X and there were some places I thought we'd, we were gonna be able to get to that that's where I wanted to hunt but now being down here and seeing the snow levels there's no way we could get back in there but there's no reason that we'd want to be back in here because I just think there's too much snow for the majority of the bears, so that's all right. We checked that box. Now we go start looking elsewhere. Man, we're having fun. We've seen five bears today. We haven't had the greatest weather. Uh, I don't think we're gonna have the greatest weather tomorrow, but um, that first day that it's sunny all day, so I think we're gonna see hundreds of bears, flocks of them, just oh. coming in. But anyway. That's a really good bear. He's walking like that. He looks that. low. He's walking like that. It's just number six for the day, guys. No big deal. In crappy weather. In crappy weather. Imagine like one day some go ahead. I'm seeing a lot of jet blacks in here. I was gonna say, is the color phase not a thing down here? Well that sat was beautiful, like dark chocolate. That's a mm -hmm. big bear. Yeah, that's a shooter bear for sure. Just, dude, we're doing everything we can. We're trying to get to places and we get snowed out, so we just get to places that we can see. And man, it's like everywhere we go, everywhere we've been that we've spent, you know, considerable amount of time blasting, we find bears, which is, dude, this is wild. This is, that's bear number six for the day. And 
it's not great weather. Like I've always understood like bears, especially in spring, really like warm, just calm days. Not rainy, not blowy, blowy, windy. But <laughs> so I can't imagine what is gonna happen when we get a day of just bluebird day, bluebird skies. This is a really good bear's bite. I think this is the first one I've seen that was like, ooh, that's, that's a shooter maybe. Not first day shooter though. You guys all think I'm crazy, but I'm like, guys, we've been here for less than 24 hours, seen six different bears, and we really don't have the weather in our favor. I'm not trying to be a trophy hunter, but man, like something like this, I always just want to like experience what this thing, this place has to offer. And uh, so far it has a lot of bears to offer. Good morning from bear camp. It's day number two out here in the, in the old Bruin woods, if you will. Yesterday was, uh, I'd say it was a pretty fantastic day. I don't think I've ever glassed up six bears in one day, and that's what we did yesterday. And the weather wasn't great. We're in and out of rain and fog and hail most of the day, just glassing when it cleared, and we saw six bears. So, you know, we always talk about every hunt will have its own challenge. Sometimes you don't know that challenge going into it, sometimes you do. Uh, but this the challenge has been so far the, just the weather obviously so today is supposed to be the very similar to yesterday as you can see behind me very rainy very uh, foggy um, our plan was to drop down into this canyon right behind our camp and just hunt it it looks like this canyon runs for at least two to three miles and we saw two bears in there yesterday two nice bears and so our plan was just to drop in and just hunt it slow all the way up and then hunt it back because it's kind of how bear hunting is. You can glass a hillside for four hours and within a minute there's bear that pops out on it just because that's how bears are. But uh, kind of pumping the brakes a little bit. We don't really want to drop in there until we can see and the wind's right. That's another thing. It's a pretty tight canyon I, from the bottom to the, like from the, where, the trail that we're going to be on to the other side where the bears are at, probably only about 300 yards across. So want to make sure the wind's right before we drop in there, but also want to be able to see more than 100 yards. So that's kind of where we're at right now. We are getting our packs loaded up for the day. We all agreed that it'd be worth a whole day in there trying to find one of those bears again or, or another bear, a bigger bear. I'd say those bears are nice bears and they weren't like drop your jaw, oh my gosh, that's a shooter bear. But um, again, I'm not trying to trophy hunt any bears out here, but I am just trying to see, you know, take in the experience of what this hunt offers. So. Uh, I love glassing and I really love glassing for bears and that's what this hunt is all about and So we have the next six days after today the weather's supposed to get better But I think I keep saying this the first full day of, of just sunshine we have it's gonna be like a hundred bears We're gonna see through our eyeballs Anyway, we're gonna still drop in there and see what, what we can find even if the weather sucks. It's better than nothing I always say that you have a better chance while you're out there than you do back at camp Just like the bridge. Got a bear. But it's unfortunately got caught with it. We just talked to some guys earlier. They missed a really beautiful bear yesterday in this canyon. A brown one. Just we got here in glass tower and you can see a beautiful brown bear. But it's got a cop with it, so it's a different bear than they shot at. And it's a pretty bear. This is a good place as any to sit. We saw a bear already. And the rain came in, so we put up us. Uh, we're trying out this tarp. I'll call it a tarp, but it's pretty cool. It, well, like, you can make, I don't know, like 10 plus different types of shelters with it. It's a uh, hammock. You can go, like, make an A frame. You can make, like, a teepee style. You can do just, like, a roof. I don't know what they call that, but we just have, like, five trekking poles. Uh, three on the front and then two on the back, kind of like leaning like this. Pretty sweet, man. But uh, we got that set up, so we're staying dry now. We're planning to just stay out here all day. Hopefully the rain lets up a little bit. I want to hunt up this canyon further, but we're going to sit here for a while and just kind of glass what's in front of us. We do have quite a few people around, like past two guys earlier. 
And once we got the tarp set up, we looked across the canyon, about 800 yards across the canyon. There's another group of guys, but they backed up and took off. So I like this spot. I think if we spend the next couple days in here, especially if we get some good weather, we're going to kill a bear. I don't know why, but the bears seem to love this. We've seen four different bears, different bears in this canyon in the last 12 hours. So things are looking up. I just saw their second bear of the day. It's uh, it's one of the bears we saw in here yesterday from our camp. We nicknamed him Patchy. He's got a big patch of fur missing on his right back leg, but he's right up on the top. Yeah, I would say he's a very average bear, like average to better bear. Yeah, with weathers, if we get this weather to cooperate, I think we're gonna see a lot of bears. As soon as it like calmed down and the sun came out a little bit, this bear popped out. So the one bear we're looking for, we saw last night, was right down below us, but we haven't seen him yet. But I bet if we stay here long enough, we'll find him. This is fun, man. It's like my first like spot stock bear hunt a few times, but it's never been like this good. We've seen maybe one bear the whole trip, or maybe two bears the whole trip. We've seen, I mean, yesterday alone we saw six bears, and then we saw Sal and three, two cubs this morning, and this bear, like, and we're only looking at one little area and really makes my mind race about what we could find if we wandered off a little bit. But I think the same story goes for like elk or deer. Don't leave bears to find bears. What's your guys' thought there? Right there at the bottom, see? Oh yeah. It's on that side, you can see him right there. Oh yeah. That's him. That's him. Yep, that's him. Oh, that's a stud bear. Here. Do you want to get your other full? That's that same bear. That's a stud bear. While we were glassing this bear, we call patches up here that we saw yesterday. And we were we kept looking down here for the last, I don't know, a couple hours, hour and a half. And I don't know where he was. He must have been in that patch of trees there right above the creek and just looked down and there he was standing on the hillside. I'm gonna kill that bear. I'd kill that bear, Casey. 246. Oh, thick. Dead bear! Dead All the bear, way to the dude. river. Uh-oh. It's okay. He's in the river. <laughs> oh, that's a stud, man. Dude. <sighs> I think that he's in the river, dog. That's a stud bear. What are we gonna do? We're gonna have to get over there and hike all the way down to the water. Hold, what did I just say? I said if we get some weather, this bear's gonna come out and we're gonna see him right here. And Clayton's like, there's the bear, there's the bear. I just smoked him at 274 yards. You hammered him, dude, right through the shoulder. Um, on my only, only concern is there was a river in the bottom of it, and he just tumbled all the way down, and I think he hit the water. Dude, we might need one to get down there and Should look. we just go down this side? I think there's enough log jams that would be able to find We'd, him. Yeah, as long as he doesn't go under. Well, and they float, too, so. That dude, nice shot, the, bro. Oh my gosh, I've had... That was freaking awesome. If he wasn't such a good bear, I wouldn't have killed him just because we're having so much fun and I always just want to have the experience. We're seeing bears everywhere we go. Like, if I was to draw a picture of what I think spring bear hunting should look like and feel like, it would be this shot right here. Just high on a creek that's roaring because of the, the, the melt or the, the snow, snow runoff. Yep. I'm a little excited. <laughs> and then just like green hillsides that are open with timber patches super rocky steep like bears always want to be in the most steep country they can find and that's what 
that's what this canyon is, man. We just we lucked into this spot. We didn't know much about coming into this this area. We were trying to get to a higher spot in the unit to hunt, and uh, got snowed out, so we had to back up and basically just set our camp off the side of the road, just because we're like, this is as good as any. We can glass from camp, and sure enough, we killed a bear in the canyon right behind our camp. I just love how and, you glassed him and you said, I'm gonna kill that bear. Yeah. <laughs> well, we saw him last night. We were trying to beat the rain last night and trying to glass as much as we could before we got dumped on. And right before the storm came in, I glassed from over there and glassed down and he was right above the creek. And we all agreed like that was by far the best bear we've seen. And Pretty bear, dude. Pretty just jet black, bear. the dark muzzle on him. He's a stud. So now we got our work cut out for us. Yes. <laughs> We got a lot Show of him a have. shot of where that bear's at. So Casey was right here, shooting off this rock. So the bear was just above the creek about 50 yards, shot him, he ran into the trees, and then all of a sudden he just cartwheeled into that creek down there. Yeah, he was like here. Lucky for us, there's a road on the other side that we're gonna have to go drive around to, all the way around and then hike down, and hopefully he hasn't gone far. But Dude, I filmed him rolling too and he was moving yeah he was i have you guys familiar with the phrase cannonball <laughs> that's by far the biggest bear i've ever taken up super lucky what a cool spot too <laughs> <laughs> well the only thing that has me concerned is if that bear made it to the creek and he got swept down the river i think i'm pretty confident that he got hung up in that log jam I, after i shot him and he ended up in the creek we think he ended up in the creek i kind of walked down off the side you can't really see all the way into the creek but you could i could just see enough to look like there was a big log jam and then we looked at our onyx and it kind of flattened out there down there so we sent dylan down that side the only problem is why we didn't go down that side is you can't get across the creek down there it's a river really so you got to come around and uh, hopefully it's just hung up on some trees and it's not going to be that big of an issue. So, fingers crossed. Well, this is, we got over here, and this is right where I shot him, then we found the blood, and he came, like, cartwheel down through this chute, and I could see blood right at the river where he went in. So, pretty sketchy situation, there's a big log jam here, and I think he went in right there, I don't know if he stayed there, the water's ripping, but definitely see exactly where he went, hit the water. We're gonna go down there and see be very careful that it drops off to the water. Yeah. Like if you slip, you're going in. Casey found him. It's freaking insane, man. We got over here and saw the, like, the path he went when he cartwheeled. And sure enough, look at that rock right there, right before the creek, blood. We knew he fell right in here. So, there's enough logs, I didn't think he was gonna go through it. I'm not 100% sure, but I'm 99% sure the bear 
water is right here. <laughs> I can see him, dude. I can see him. Yeah, I can feel him under this wall. He's right there. So I don't know how we're gonna get him out, but I'm gonna put my hand down in there, which is kind of scary. Yeah. He's dead. He's I'm going underwater. <laughs> my biggest fear is I'm going underwater to get a bear. <laughs> I wish it would have lasted longer just because it's been so fun for the last day and a half. Seen a lot of bears. See, it's a beautiful country. And then I killed a super nice boar. Um, you know, the retrieval wasn't everything. I, it was something I never would have guessed would have happened. But as soon as I shot that bear and he started cartwheeling it, it clicked in my mind that there's a big raging river right down below him and he might end up in there. But we got super lucky and he landed in a spot that was kind of calmer water and he just went right to the bottom and got hung up in a log so it's a fact bear sink we looked it up on the way over here we're like oh bears float and logan looked it up bears definitely don't float <laughs> uh caribou and moose do float you shoot them in the water black bears and grizzlies do not so now you know 